Yo, man, LAZ, man, Gem Pop TV. You heard the next big channel on YouTube. You heard. This is the best jail stories, street stories, hood stories you ever saw in your life. Rikers Island stories, all in syndication. You heard. It's too much content on my regular channel for everybody to see every episode, man. So I got to put some of these episodes back out so the peoples could see them. You heard? And that's what this Gen Pop TV thing is about. But don't get it twisted. There will be exclusive content that's on Gen Pop TV only. And that's a fact. You heard? But comment, gang. Make sure y'all tear this up. I need 100, 200 comments on this in the first half hour. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. You heard both channels, the St. Laz channel and the Gem Pop TV channel. Share these videos to Facebook. Tweet these videos out. Send them to a friend. Let's get it. Z Lord. Yeah, when I got, when I went to El Mauro, you know, back in the day, I went at the time exactly. Literally, I think we was one of the first buses that came through that they stopped you from bringing all of your property in there. You know, at one time before this, you could have went up there with a thousand bars of soap and whatever you had, cosmetics, whatever you bought up there. But the crazy shit is I went up there with mad shit. I had mad soap, cosmetics and all that. I told you my nigga Preem when I was leaving, this nigga went from cell to cell telling niggas like, yo, nah, my nigga going up north, like, give me something. And niggas was shooting them all type of shit. So I went up there with mad cosmetics and all of this stuff. And when I got there, just to be the one of the first buses to, for them to tell you can't come in with all of that no more. And I kind of like, I was mad, like, what? And they was like, yeah, like, that's the new rule. You only can come in with what you need. Like, everything else you're going to have to accumulate off commissary. Your mail and I think... It was like three bars of soap, some shit like that. I had damn near a hundred and something bars of soap and lotion and fucking shampoo. I had a rack of shit. They took all that. So anyway, yeah, when I got up there, that was the time that that shit was starting. I went up north in 87. So I, um, they, you know how Elmira is. That shit got the, um, tears and whatnot to it. And they put you in the cells and you can see all of the tears across from you and whatnot. Niggas used to fish. I think they put the gates up there now so you can't even fish like you used to. You know how you used to be able to, like, make you a fishing line and sling that shit across the tent to your people's cell and they mm -hmm. throw some shit in the sock or whatever and you pull it back to your cell and they had they had the uh, pirate fishers and shit that see you with a line. They used to make them thick-ass lines. So if they see a line come out, they'll wait till they see that shit tug, knowing that your people telling you pull it back, you good. And then they'll sling their thick line over top of your shit and wrap around and pop your line and take your shit to they sell. And all that shit was going on in the Elmira at that time, right? So I went up there with some niggas that I knew from the island. It wasn't niggas that I was real cool with, but it was niggas I knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen on the island and whatnot. It wasn't niggas I was rocking with. But one of them was this dude. Um, This is the part I just can't remember. His name was either Smiley or Sleepy. But he was from Fort Greene, little slim nigga with low eyes. I, I always think, I think it was Smiley, but I think I always related him to Sleepy because his eyes was low as a bitch. But I believe he was from Fort Greene. But anyway, he was one of the dudes that came up there with us. And I mentioned his name because of what happened after this shit. So one day, it was freezing, like it was brick outside. But they called Rhett. And I'm like, fuck this shit, I'm tired. You know, you on 23 and 1. So I'm tired of this shit, I'm going outside. So I went outside in that cold ass weather and we got a basketball game jumping and it was only me and one of the other niggas that, like I said, I came up there with. I can't think of his name now. Shit was like Sherrod or some shit like that. But it's me and him went to the yard and it's a rack of niggas out there, but only the niggas that I fuck with. Only one other nigga went out there with us. So we get into a basketball game. So we playing ball now. The niggas that we playing against is all peoples. And my man and the dude that he's guarding is going at it the whole game. Yo, man, gotta fuck that shit about they bumping, you know, little fouls and all that shit. That's jail ball. Like that shit. That that's that is what it is. You know how jail ball is. So they doing that the whole game, but it's a lot of mouthing going back and forth between them. Like, you know, you can tell it's heated, but like I said again, that's jail ball. You, you sometimes jail ball look like it's about to be a fucking fight in the middle of the game 
but it just is what it is. And after the game, niggas dap up and go their way. So that's the energy that's going on between these two. And everybody else is like ball and kinda, you know, it's little scuffles here and there, but it's just regular ball, regular shit. But they're they're kind of going back and forth hard. So at the end of the game, they was like, yo, they still going at it, like talking shit to each other. And all of his niggas was like, yo, punch that nigga in the mouth. That, uh, they like, it's turning into a situation now. We beat them in the game. So now the shit is turned into a situation. So I'm like, yo, come on. I'm grabbing this nigga. Like, yo, come on. Like I said, he ain't my man, but it's a nigga that I definitely knew. Like seen on the island. We ain't even really speak that much, but I knew his name. He knew my name. And we was cool enough for us to be like, nah, nigga, it, ain't, it is what it is. So I'm telling him, come on. Like, yo, fuck that shit. So I'm trying to pull him back from the situation. And the dudes is like crowding around us. It's a mob of niggas because they see us a situation. It's probably about 15, 16 of them. So they kind of crowding around us and whatnot. So I'm like, yo, y'all niggas going to fight or y'all niggas going to keep talking? I said, but it ain't going to be no jumping shit. Like y'all niggas, what up? Like y'all niggas pushing up like y'all ready to jump, my man. So they was like, what nigga? Fuck that. Fuck that. So I'm like, yo, you going to fight this nigga or what? Because... That's the only thing I'm concerned about now. If not here, grab your motherfucking jacket and let's go. So I still got my jacket in my hand. I ain't put my shit on because I don't know what's going to happen. So these niggas are still mobbing. Him and the dude still going back and forth. And the other niggas is like, yo, punch that nigga in his mouth and all that. So I'm like, all right, fuck this. So I, no, matter of fact, I had my jacket on because I remember pulling my jacket off now. And I'm like, nah, fuck this shit. So I pull my jacket off. And I'm passing it to a nigga like, yo, hold my jacket, hold my jacket. You know how you do to try to make niggas think there's more niggas with you. And I'm just hoping a nigga grab my jacket so they be like, oh, it's more niggas with them. But one of the niggas, whoever I'm passing my jacket to, he <laughs> must have been with them because the jacket ain't leaving my hand. <laughs> and so I look back and the nigga just looking at me and looking down at my jacket. And I got it like pressed to his chest and he not look, he not taking it. He just looking at me and looking at my jacket like, nigga, I'm with them. So I dropped the jacket on the floor and I'm like, fuck that jacket. I'm like, yo, what's up? Y'all niggas gonna jump him. It ain't gonna be no jumping shit. If it is, y'all gonna jump both of us. Like, what up? What up? Y'all gonna fight or what? So they wind up closing the yard and ain't nothing come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just almost a situation. But when we go back to the house, when we go back to the thing, that shit started hitting the tear. And I went in the bed, I went in the, in the cell, and I'm laying down. You know what I'm saying? I hear niggas yelling my name like, yo, cell, play the game, play the game. So I get up and I go to the gate. I'm like, yo, what's up? And they was like, yo, what happened in the yard, nigga? Like, fuck that shit. And I'm like, nah, man, that shit wasn't about nothing. And they was like, oh, yeah, that shit about something. Like, niggas trying to front, niggas trying to front. Fuck that. Yeah, Sal, that's how it is. We ain't come up north to get soft. Like, fuck that shit. We wasn't soft on the island. We ain't coming up here to get soft. All y'all niggas that got a problem with my niggas, play the yard tomorrow. Y'all want that same energy, play the yard tomorrow. So they talking crazy. And the next day, we went out to the yard. Ain't none of them niggas hit the yard. Out of all of them dudes that was up there, I thought it was going to be some, but none of them niggas hit the yard, so it really wasn't nothing. And then I had, like, another situation in the mess hall. It was a dude that I was locked up with on the island, a Spanish dude. Now, you know how it was back in the days. Um, or I don't know if you bit it during this time, but at the time where I bit it, they, they would not let more than three chops four Spanish people in the house on the island. If more than that started trying to come in there, because you know Spanish people, they start speaking that, that Spanish stuff to their peoples, and next thing you know, they going like, hey, yo, that's my family, that's my family, he good, he good. But if it was already three in the house, maybe four, they'd be like, all right, that's your peoples and everything, but tell him he can't come in here. Like, you good, but tell him he can't come in here. Tell him go to another house. We got three or four of y'all in here already. And they've done that. It wasn't on no racist type shit it was just on a tight time whereas once spanish people accumulate they're they're more unified than black people like black people we'll fight each other we'll have our issues and shit we'll rob each other and all of that spanish people once they get together they bond together and if you get too many of them in a house you got a problem because they was the best gun makers i ever seen in my life them dudes used to make guns that look like they were street weapons they have a four fifth, a nine, a Uzi up in that joint. <laughs> but they were swords, but you know what I mean? They they knew how to make guns. And so back in the day on the island, they wouldn't have let but so many accumulate in the house. And it wouldn't have been on no 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 like 
negative type time. It was just on some peaceful shit. Like, yo, that's your peoples and everything. We understand that. But tell them, go to another house. Because if you come in here, it's going to be a problem. And that's what they would do. They'd be like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, tell them something in Spanish. And a dude would tell them, oh, nah, I can't go in here. So, anyway, one of the Spanish dudes that was in the house, he was good peoples. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and this dude talked a few times. So, I had no issues with him. But... One day I'm at work. I used to work in the mess hall. One day I'm at work and some shit happened with him and they ran the nigga out the house. You know, he got, I think he got uh, shot and everything. They ran him out the house. But I had nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? I was at work and I had no problems with dudes. Like I said, me and the dude spoke a few times. But anyway, yeah, they ran the nigga out the house. And when I come back, they told me what happened. But when I get to Elmira, this nigga at Elmira, he, he's... That's where he's housed at. And he's working in the mess hall. So when I come through the mess hall, like this day, I'm hungry as a bitch. And he put like a little stab on my tray. So I'm like, Bobby, what's up? My nigga, da 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 da. And I'm telling him, like, yo, load me up a little. I'm hungry. Like, and the nigga looked at me and was like, keep moving. And I said it again. I'm like, yo. Please, my nigga, like, look out. You know how they had you in there. Like I said, they took all my shit. I don't got nothing. All we get is these little meals until we get established. So he already shitted on my tray by giving me that little ass bit. But I'm trying to tell him, give me a little more. Like, give me something to hold me down for the night, pop. And nigga wouldn't do it. So I got mad as a bitch and I flipped the whole tray in that nigga face. I was Mm -hmm. like, yo, nigga, fuck you and this tray. So I flipped the whole tray in that nigga face. And... That nigga, he ain't even do nothing. He just stepped back, had his little spoon in his hand that he was serving with, and that nigga looked down. He had all that shit on him. I think it was Getty or some shit. That shit was all on him and shit. And that nigga looked back up at me, and he was like, yo, come to population. He was like, bring your ass to population. And I was like, nigga, fuck you and population. And the police came and grabbed me, took me out there, and locked me in my cell. They ain't let me go to the mess, so they fed me in my cell for a few days and shit. But... Yeah, I, I, I know about him with the population. I probably would have been dealing with some issues because he looked like he was established. And at that time, you know how it is when you on an island, somebody don't have to be nothing. But when they hit up that, they hit that up north and they lock in with some peoples, they could have been nobody on the island, but they got it popping up there. And I think that's how that dude was. Like, I think he was established there. He looked like he was. So I said, all right, it is what it is. You know, when you in big mode, you don't care about none of that shit. So... If I would have hit population, it would have been what it was. What you mean? You didn't go to population and got you out of jail? Nah, they, um, you know, I was in Elmira reception. That's when Elmira was reception. So they, um, from there, they shipped me to my spot. You know what I'm saying? I, if I would have went to population, it would have been what it was, but I, they didn't, they didn't keep me there. They, 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 you know, you getting classified when you're there and getting shipped to your spots. Yeah. Like in Comstock, you go through orientation. But you still got to go to population, too. That's, that shit was different. Like, I did orientation in Comstock. But they putting your ass in regular ass population. You going to the yard. Everything with regular population. Until you until you get shipped out to your medium, which could take months. But this is in the 90s. Yeah, this was in the 80s. I went up in 87. So... Yeah, once I got class, I, I was saying that shit too. Like, I didn't care, but in my head, I was like, I only had a little one and a half to three, which I wound up doing 30 months off that bitch anyway. But I was saying, I see y'all out on that. But I was saying, you know, like, man, if I, I don't want to go to population, but if I go there, it is what it is. But I knew if I went there, it was going to be some shit. I was going to have to kill one of them niggas or they was going to try to kill me. Because he was mad, I could see that shit in his face, and like I said, I could see he was established. His, and it was like a bunch of Spanish dudes right there that just started smiling and like grab that nigga arm, like yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing, but looking at me like I. Right. But yeah, man, that's um, like I, I really, my my bidding days, even on the island, like I told you. But you, you think he tried to give you that day. part himself? You think he tried to give you that small amount because he knew who you was? Yeah, he remembered me. He knew who I was. That's why I felt like he'd done that. But like I said, I never had no issues with him. I wasn't even in the house when them niggas ran him out of there. So. <laughs> niggas just yeah, saw I'm you. Not- he probably thought that you was in the house when they ran. The whole house jumped him? I don't know. I, I know when I came back, niggas was telling me what happened. Like, yo, they, they popped on your boy and whatnot. You know, he, he got shot and everything and they sent them out of here. 
And I was trying to find out what happened. I think I forgot what it was. You know, that was a minute ago. But I think it was some shit where, you know what I'm saying, niggas tried to extort them or some shit. I don't know. I forgot what it was. But or either he got loud about something, whatever the situation was. I know when I came back, he was gone and packed up and niggas was telling me what happened. But yeah, I had nothing to do with that shit. So I didn't feel like you should be punishing me for what these niggas done to you. Because if it was vice versa and I'm back there and you came through and I know me and you never had no bad type energy, I'm going to feed you. Or at least give you what the fuck you deserve. I'm not going to give you less than that. That nigga really put like a half a scoop on my tray. <laughs> yeah, like I was mad as a bitch about that. I'm in motherfucking 23 and 1, ain't got shit up in that cell. Nigga hungry as a motherfucker drinking water trying to survive. So I was waiting for that tray. And he shit it on me. But yeah, like um, like I was saying, like on the island and up north, like I never really had to be extra. You know, like I could have been extra. I had that energy to be extra, but I never had to be extra. Like I, I was just always somebody that knew how to bid, so I knew how to move through situations and whatever I'm dealing with, you know, if I if it came to something, then it got handled. But I never had to be on no extra tight time. Not that not that I had not that I had to, but I never had that energy to be on that. You know what I'm saying? Like I just bid it. I done my time. And the times that shit popped off with me, it was because somebody came at me like uh, on a whole nother direction. It wasn't because I done no shit. But um I remember when I first came to um that house in the three building, nigga tried to play me for a BBD or BBD, whatever them shits was called. You remember them shits? Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, back in the day on the island, them shits was like garments, garments. That's, that's the jail. <laughs> That's the that's like, like Saquon having, to say that shit was garments. It's just was good garments on. Yeah, that shit was good garments, and I had the real joints. You know, they had the fake little shits, and then they had the real ones. And mm -hmm. I had the real shits, like the silk joints, BBDs, and I had a, I had on a, I think I had the blue underwear and the red top, or the red underwear and the blue top. I had a mixed match shirt on when I got locked up, but you know, they was the real shits and. Some dude came to my cell. I think he might have been, you know, house gang or whatever. He came by my cell. He saw that. He was like, oh, shit, my nigga. Yo, you got such and such a... That's crazy because I got the color. I got the top to that right there. Like, you want to switch out? And I was like, word. He was like, yeah. So I'm like, all right, I can get the matching joint to this. And, you know, I give him this joint. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. So this nigga, he, I give him the shirt. He come back to my cell and slide some old fake shit under my cell. The old fake one raggedy as hell i'm like yo what the fuck is this and he was like it was brand new and everything so now i'm realizing he's trying to play me so i'm like yo what the fuck is this and he was like yo that's the shit that's the shit. i said nah nigga give me my shirt back give my shit back so he was like nah nah it's too late like once you make a trade it's a trade i was like oh word all right cool so he leave my cell and this is like when we came in the whole house was locked in so i didn't see nobody i don't know who in this house yet i'm just getting here and I think it's nighttime. So, yeah, he might have been suicide because I think I came in at night. But anyway, I know the next day when I come out of my cell and niggas see me, they start flipping like, oh, shit, cell. Like, I knew a whole lot of niggas from there from Notion Avenue and shit. Like, a lot of Notion Avenue and Franklin Avenue niggas was in there. So, I saw a lot of niggas I knew and I'm like, what up, what up? So, they was like, this nigga standing at his cell and he's seeing how many niggas in the house I knew. And all of these niggas had the house on smash. So now he got to be feeling some type of way because he come to me and he was like, yo, man, you right, you right. Um, I'm going to give you back your shit. And I was like, oh, nah, no, you're not. That's yours. Like, you good. So he trying to squash the shit now. I was like, nah, that's yours. Like, you already said, Joe, said what you said last night. Just be ready for what comes back behind that. So my man was standing right there and he was like, yo, what happened? What happened? Like, this nigga trying to front on you? I'm like, nah, nah, ain't nothing. So he was like, yo, I hope you ain't do no dumb shit to my nigga, man. Like, nah, that, that's a bad move. So the dude was like, nah, nah, nah. Like, we made a trade, but, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, I, 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 it wasn't like a good trade and this and that. And I was like, yo, like, you ain't even got to say all that. Like, it is what it is. So we, um, I let the shit go. My nigga was like, yo, that nigga tried to play you, nigga. Like, let me know. And I'm like, nigga, he ain't do nothing. Like, it's all good. But they had a dude in there, I don't know. If you heard of this name, but this nigga name was C. They used to call him Big C. He was a black dude, but he looked like he was Spanish. And he had like a lazy eye. And me and C would wind up becoming cool later. But at first, he was standing at his door when that whole exchange took place. 
So he was like, yo, why you ain't telling niggas what happened? Like, you know, your people's got this house on smash. And I was like, because that's not their problem. That's mine. Let me deal with that. And he was like, yo, you going to do something to this nigga? I said, of course. So he was like, um, all right, you need me help? Like, let me know. And when C used to talk, like, he, when he's talked, he always rocked his knee like that. His knee would bounce up and down. So he's sitting in the day room while he's talking to me. And his knee is just going up and down. And I'm looking at this nigga like, is he about to do something? This nigga nervous or what? But that's just how he was. That's how he spoke. He was like, yo, let me know, nigga. Like, if you need me, I'm good with your peoples and whatnot. Like, if you need me, I got you. Because I'm a little small dude at this time. Like I said, I didn't really came, gain no weight until I hit the um, hit down south. Up top on the island, didn't know I'm a little small nigga. So it don't really matter. But at the same time, the dude that done this shit had a little size on him. So I'm like, I'm good. I got it. So he was like, all right, all right. But how I caught that nigga was he used to always have his walkman on. And one day he's sitting in the day room. I waited for like two or three days. I act like everything was good, rocking to sleep. And when he see I'm not making no moves, I'm hollering at my peoples. My peoples ain't looking at him no type of way. He must have felt like, ah, yeah, this nigga let it ride. But that's what I wanted him to feel. So one day he's sitting in the day room and he watching TV and he's listening to the music. I put a chair up on the table. Back then they had them big ass metal chairs. I put a chair up on the table, climbed up on that chair and sat in the chair. And I told my peoples to watch the off, watch the bubble with, for that officer to be looking on the other side. So my man was like, all right, I got you. So when he nodded that the officer was on the other side, I stood up on that motherfucking table, grabbed that chair and I brought that shit down on his head. But when I'm bringing it down, the table had me up so high that the chair is scraping on the ceiling. That shit like, eh! but he didn't hear it because he got his walkman on. So when the chair let go of the ceiling, that shit came down with full force. And that shit was like, Bow! it hit that nigga so hard. The officer turned around and came in there. But your boy jumped up and grabbed his. He's like, ah, oh! that nigga grabbed his head. He snatched his do-rag off. Like he had a do-rag on. He must have act like the do-rag hurt him. Because that nigga snatched his do-rag off and threw it on the floor. And he looked at me and I threw my hands up. And he was like, nah, nah, nigga, I don't want no problem. I don't want no problem. Like, I know why you've done that. I know why you've done that. And the officer came and like, what the fuck going on? What's going on? And the off, uh, he was like, nothing, nothing. We both like, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. We in that bullshit. So the officer was like, nah, nah, what's going on? And your boy was like, yo, let me talk to you. And he went out there with the officer. And a few minutes later, they packed his shit up and he left. But that was the end of that. Like I said, I, 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 if it came to something, then I went in. But other than that, I ain't really, like, had no problem with niggas. I always just done my bid and went home. I wasn't on no extras. And nine times out of ten, that's why, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, my jail stories, I got a few, but, you know, they just little quick in and out because I never really was on no extra stuff, man. Like, I be hearing some of these stories and them joints be harvest to me. I be like, damn, you know, niggas was going in for real. And that's how you gotta be. Like, the mentality that get instilled in you, I be listening to some of these stories and like I said, I like to listen. I don't know if you've seen that comment, but I like to listen as a person that never been there because I get the full experience. If I listen as a person that been there, I know the mentality you gotta adapt to survive in there. But listening as a person who never been there, but hearing how you got to go into a spot where you sometimes don't know nobody in there and everybody in there is looking at you sideways. They got razors, they got knives, they got all type of shit, and then they're going to beat you to death with their hands. You know what I'm saying? A person that ain't never been in that environment, yo, that shit sound like horror stories. And that's how I be listening. I listen like a person that never been there. And man, we went through some stuff. Like we survived through some shit that people can't even imagine being a part of and you gotta adapt to that you gotta become a certain type of animal just to survive in it even when you're doing like i did just doing your bed on the regular shit it's really no such thing as chilling it ain't really no such thing as just doing your bed i remember i got locked up in maryland and niggas out there was wilding they was extra they was always doing some shit and they used to always ask me like yo sale man you from up top i know you seen this shit all the time like why you don't be getting a part of this wreck and i was like because y'all niggas doing that shit because y'all just want to i said i don't been locked up in spots where you had to do shit just to establish yourself y'all niggas letting me chill y'all ain't on me if y'all was on me then i probably have to be on some extra shit but y'all letting me be i don't have to be on no extra shit but y'all niggas is y'all not wrecking because 
y'all have to. You know how the island was. You were wrecked sometime for just for wreck too. But on the island, there ain't no such thing as coming in here and just doing the time and getting back out the way. You're gonna have to be on something to to get you through that. You're gonna have to establish yourself. You have to make a name. But once you do that, you can probably bid. And even then, shit still gonna come at you. But like I said, when shit came, I handled it. I just didn't never like be on no extra shit just to be on it. So them niggas just look at me sideways, but it was what it was. I've been up top bidding, and y'all niggas is down here where it ain't really nothing going on. Like, nigga could come in here and just do their bid and go home, but y'all making wreck. They used to run niggas out of that house left and right. I remember the police came in there one day and took the TVs and the phone. That's the only time I spoke up. They came in there and took the TVs and the phone and was like, yo, man, nah, y'all ain't getting shit back until y'all get yourselves together. Like, everybody we keep putting in this house, y'all running them back out of here. And it wasn't no officers in the house neither. Like, once they put you in there and closed that door, the officer made rounds. You was just in that bitch. So they was like, y'all niggas is in here wildin'. We taking this shit until y'all get y'all shit back together. And I waited till the officers left out, but I just made that announcement. I'm like, yo, y'all niggas gonna have to fall the fuck back because I used that phone. And it's not even on no boo loving type shit. I called my lawyer. That's when I told you I was stuck out there on that bullshit ass gun charge trying to get the fuck out of here on that charge they had me on and whatnot. And I'm like, I call my lawyer and I'm calling my um my bonds people trying to get the fuck out of here. Like y'all niggas is in here wilding and now y'all lost the phone. So the next niggas that come in here, if y'all niggas ain't got following with them, them niggas is living. They they gonna get a bed and relax. Like y'all niggas fall the fuck back. So when the officer made their rounds to feed us, I was like, yo, we need them phones back. And they was like, we need y'all niggas to chill. I said, y'all got it. We going, we going chill. And that's how that, that, that wound up falling back. But they knew, I don't know, like from me telling them we need the phones back and niggas is going to chill, they knew that I spoke up and got that house calmed down. Because like a week later, them niggas transferred me to honor, honor part. And I was over that bitch chilling. They had handball over there. Your cells ain't locked. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then niggas wrote me out of that house on some scary shit. I wasn't even over there on no scary shit. Niggas wrote me out of there. I went back to the other side. And niggas was happy to see me back over there. But it was crazy. Why niggas wrote you up out of there, though? I don't know. It was that that part was just a happy ass part, and I didn't walk around there happy. I'm still in jail. I never been in no spot where you can go outside and play handball, and the, the rec yard wasn't locked. The rec yard is right there by the fucking uh, uh, dorm. I mean, by the by the cells, and you can go in your cell. It didn't have to lock your cell. The door stayed open all night, so y'all could stay out in the day room or be in your cell. And that shit was just happy as a motherfucker to me. And I'm like. I didn't. I, I still walked around there on point, so I, I wasn't smiling. I wasn't really communicating with niggas and whatnot. But I guess they felt like uh, this nigga on some different type time. He don't deserve to be here. So niggas wrote me out of there. <laughs> uh, came yeah. to but it wasn't even. I wasn't on no different type time. I just wasn't used to that. Uh, on a dorm, I ain't never been in no fucking armor dorm. On a dorm in my life. And I don't know how the fuck they put me over there. They just put me over there, I guess. Like I said, that's the only thing I could think of. When I spoke up and I told them, like, we going to chill. After that, they was able to put niggas in there that wasn't getting ran out. Like, people was coming in there and chilling. Like, the dorm calmed down behind me speaking up. So I guess they was like, nah, let's get him out of here. He don't deserve to be in there with these animals. <laughs> and they don't realize I'm one of them. It's just that I'm on some different type time. But, yeah, behind that, that's when they moved me, like, a week later. So I felt like that's the only thing I can relate it to was that they put, like, six people in there after that, and they didn't get ran out. Before that, if you didn't come in there and knew something or somebody, you was getting ran right back out of there. After that, like, six dudes came in there and was okay. And it wasn't no fighting and shit going on. Like, niggas respected that. I said, nigga, I got, I got cases I'm fighting. I don't know what y'all trying to do. Y'all get on this phone and calling girls and shit, nigga. I'm getting on here calling lawyers and trying to get my situation straight so yeah they fell back after that but yeah man yeah, so man. I um like I said I just I just always was able to just maneuver through shit without the extras I don't even think up up top other than when I went up north like I said other than that yard shit and me flipping that tray on the Spanish dude I don't really think I went through much of shit you know what I'm saying like Everything else was peace. I, I 
met some good ass dudes and I met some grimy ass niggas, but I never really had no bad situations. Yeah, <clears throat> my bed, man. I went through. I was always the type of dude. You know what they say, man. The wise rule is strong. You feel what I'm saying? So I was always an intelligent young motherfucker. And when you were an intelligent young motherfucker, OG gangsta ass niggas, they going to feel you. Right. They like you. They like a young smart nigga because they already at the stages and ages of their life where they starting to regret a lot of shit that they did, but they still got that gangster shit in them. But they, re they ready for a change in life and they meet a young sharp nigga that still got potential to change his life, they take a liking to you. That. You know what I mean? And they want to fuck with you. If you a young, stupid nigga that just want problems and you always looking for problems, you going to find them shits. That's that. And no I just fucking lie. I do remember some other shit that happened. I remember niggas tried to run up once in the shower with some Spanish niggas because my man Trouble, this nigga named Trouble, he was from the Bronx, a big-ass young boy. And my nigga Kip, they robbed this nigga, um, they robbed this nigga locker when they was at wreck or something. And the Spanish niggas knew it was them. So one day we in the shower and I was in mid orange. No, I was in Orleans correctional facility. And you know how the shower, this dorms and the showers is made so that, you know, you walk up in there and the bathroom is right there. And you know, you can see out the showers into the stalls. I mean, into the bathroom. So I'm in the shower and a Spanish dude came in there, but he in full gear. Nigga got a coat on, boots and everything. So I peeped that when he came in because it's not winter time. So I'm like, fuck this nigga dressed up like that for? But I didn't know at this time, my nigga trouble in them had robbed their lockers, but they, they knew and they found out that it was him. So I peeped that, but at the same time, I'm not paying much attention because I'm not like, we ain't got no problems with them. So what the fuck is, whatever it is, it ain't got nothing to do with us. So a few seconds later, another Spanish dude came in there the same way. And before you know it, it's like four or five of them in the shower all geared up. And I'm told trouble after the second dude. I was like, yo, pay attention. Like two dudes, two Spanish niggas just came in here and they fully dressed, coats, boots and all. And he was like, what? So that nigga looking out the shower, man, fuck them niggas. Fuck them niggas, Sal. I swear to God, them niggas come in here, they gonna have a problem. I, I, I fuck them niggas up there, play ass naked. <laughs> so, like, nigga, we in the shower, no guns and nothing. Nine times out of ten, them niggas ain't dressed up like that without guns. So he was like, fuck them niggas, fuck them. He's saying it loud enough so them niggas hear. But like I said, after a while, like four or five of them niggas in there. And we drying off now, getting ready. And before you know it, too, our people started coming in the shower. Somebody must have peeped it and went and got our niggas and told them, like, yo, niggas going up in the shower forming on y'all people. So next thing you know, it's a mob of our niggas in there, like, yo, what the fuck is up? So they was like, nah, nah, you know, he done such and such and such, and we just want our shit back. And now me and Trouble dressed up and came out the shower. So I'm mad as a bitch now because y'all don't came in the shower and caught us off guard. And I'm a part of this because y'all know I fuck with this nigga. So y'all already know whatever took place in this shower, Y'all was involving me in this shit too. So I didn't even want to hear that talk. While they sitting there talking about we just said, I said, nah, nah, it ain't none of that. I said, I'll be right back. I went straight to my cell, armed up, put all my shit, and came back to that shower. And I'm like, what the fuck is up? So they was like, no, no, cell. We just talked to these niggas and they feel like trouble does some shit. And I said, so which one of these niggas got a problem with it? Whose shit was it? Because it ain't all of these niggas that's going to jump on my nigga. Which one of these niggas was it? And they was like, it was his shit that got taken. And I said, so he got a problem with my nigga. He the one who handled that shit. The rest of y'all niggas get the fuck out the bathroom. But they was like, nah, they just, he, 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 he just want to fight him. And I was like, that sounds good to me. Like I said, Trouble was a big ass young nigga that was about that motherfucking life. So I knew he ain't had no problem handling his business. Man, he drugged that nigga all over that bathroom, slammed him into the sink and all that shit. Fucked that nigga ankle up. But, yeah, that was the end of that shit. That was the only other thing I had that I could think of in my head. But, yeah, man, that was um Orleans Correctional shit. I got my GED in that motherfucker. Yeah, man, it was a riot in Orleans. I think back in the days, I think a, a, a police, a, a correction officer got killed in Orleans, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Damn. Back in the days in the riot. Yeah, this back in the day when they used to feed you good when you went up north. I don't know how up north is now, how they feed you. But back in these days, when you left from the island and went up north, they used to feed you good. And Orleans was like one of the best spots I ate at. 
motherfucker used to have scrambled eggs, pancakes, and sausages, and all that shit for breakfast. And I used to be like, damn. It was like, yeah, nigga, you eat here. But you know, that was back in the day. That was part of the cop out. If you um on the island, they fed you like some shit. But niggas used to be like, nigga, you go up north, you eat like the king. So a lot of niggas cop out just to get the fuck out, get off the island. And go up north, knowing especially they had a bid that they was going to do anyway. Hell but yeah. damn, I ain't know that. Yeah, the nah. got, a officer got killed in that bit? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to look it up when I get off this shit with you. But if I'm not mistaken, it was a riot in there back in the days. And, 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 and they stabbed the CO up. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. That's crazy as hell.